Hello and welcome. Thanks for tuning in. It's nice to have you with us. What the hell is a one step and all in one or three in one polish? What is a prewax cleaner? How does it differ from a paint glaze? And what does a liquid canuba cream wax do more than a glaze? Now the world of detailing is already complicated enough, but we as consumers and especially the manufacturers of those products make it more complicated for us and especially for the beginners when they introduce different namings, categories and abbreviations. And this is why in this video I will try to provide you with an overview of different products within the category of polishing liquids. Because this is a very dynamic category, there were a lot of new introductions into the market in the last couple of years. And I therefore hope to take away some of the confusion, especially for you beginners out there. So let's start with this video. Now, before we start with this video, we need to talk about a few basics when it comes to paint polishing. On a very, very basic level, paint polishing and paint correction is pretty much the same thing as sanding. And sanding is probably something that you can remember from your school time and you can especially remember sanding paper. When you, for example, work on a piece of wood and you want to remove a lot of the rough surface in a very quick way, you use a rough sanding paper, which means that the numbers back there will be very low, 80, 100, 120, 100. 80. If you have removed a lot of the imperfections of the wood, you then go ahead and use something like a 240, 320 sanding paper in order to make it even nicer. And then if you want to create the perfect, the slick, the soft feeling surface, you use the sanding paper with the highest number you can find. And as I said, on a very basic level, that's exactly what paint polishing is. It is sanding, but the abrasive particles which are on this paper paper in such a polish are within these polishing liquids and they are much much smaller they are much finer they are technologically more advanced than on this paper but in general if you look at the paint surface of your car it is also something that has imperfections on it and therefore you have to work with abrasive materials in order to make it look better. And in the exactly same way that you work with different sanding papers, you also work with different polishing liquids, which have differing aggression levels. If you have a lot of paint defects and want to remove them as quickly and as effective as possible, you work with aggressive polishing liquids, such as for example, the Mencerna 300, 400 or 1000. Then if you have removed the worst of paint defects, or if you start with a paint surface that hasn't any of those really deep paint defects in it, you can start with a medium cut polish such as the Mentherna 2500. And if you're done with that and it's about getting the best possible, the clearest finish on the clear coat of your car, then you use something like a finishing polish such as Menzerna 3500. Because the main difference in working on a clear coat compared to something like wood is that as the name suggests, it's clear. Meaning that if you work with aggressive polishes, which remove paint defects in a quick and effective manner, but leave behind a not so perfect finish, you will be able to see this by a milky haze that is on the clear coat, meaning that it's not as clear as possible. And if you then want to further refine it and if you want to remove this haze, you have to work with finer polishes then. So those in layman's terms are the simple basics of paint polishing. And now that you know those basics, we can start talking about different categories within these products of polishing liquids. Because as I just said, these ones are classic polishing liquids, meaning they are only meant to really polish your paint, meaning they are meant to remove paint defects and also create a nice finish. And this is one of the most important aspects you have to understand when it comes to paint polishing. There are two things that these polishing liquids are supposed to do. On the one hand, you have defect removal, meaning that they are able to remove as much clear coat as it is necessary in order to remove the paint defect. This is one area of expertise that these products have. And then we have the other aspect, and this is the finishing ability of those polishes. And there is a trade-off between those two aspects. And to be absolutely clear about it, 
there is no product that creates the most amount of cut but also creates the best possible finish. It just isn't something that is physically possible to create. Yes, polishes get better all the time and technology moves along. So there indeed are polishes nowadays that can create quite a lot of cut and still finish in a nice way. Mencerna 400 is such an example, but also the new one and done polish by Turtle Wax is another example. However, as I just said, there will always be a trade-off. There will always be a compromise between the ability to cut and the ability to finish when it comes to those products. And now that you have understood this basic principle, we can talk about those different categories of products there exist within this polishing liquid category. As these categories are somewhat special when it comes to their abilities or they introduce an additional aspect there is when it comes to their capabilities. And the first category of product I want to talk about are so-called one-step polishes. Now one-step polishes are supposed to be products which are rather good at cutting but also are rather good at finishing. And in this respect in my personal opinion every single medium cut polish on the market is also a one step and not only the ones which are explicitly sold as ones such as the Mencerna 400 or the 3D1 or the VSS from Chemical Guys to name a few examples those are explicitly sold as one steps as is the order finesse one step but as i just said every single medium polish on the market is a one step because they are supposed to be good at cutting and also at finishing but there's something additional i want to talk about in my opinion one step does not necessarily refer to a category of products but it more likely refers to the activity you're doing one step really only means that you are done after one step, after one process, after one pass of polishing and you don't need to go ahead and first use a cutting compound, then a medium polish, then a finishing polish. Because this is an old understanding of polishing and was necessary because those polishing liquids were inherently compromised products. You had to use them in three steps because you only had one kind of machine and that was a rotary polisher. But technology has moved along not only with polishing machines and the introduction of dual action or random orbital polishes, but also in regards to polishers and the very popular polishes by Zonex, the cut and finish or the perfect finish are excellent examples of such polishes which are indeed very good at creating cut but also at creating a nice finish. Zonex has a scale from one to six when it comes to those two aspects. One being the least amount of cut or finish you can get, six being the best one. And so cut and finish is categorized as a five five. So meaning it has five out of six when it comes to cut but also five out of six when it comes to the finish. And the perfect finish has a four in cut and six in finish. So these also are one-step polishes but are not labeled as one. And this is the main issue with the category of one-step polishes that you have to keep in mind. There are ones like the one from Auto Finesse which are labeled as one, but pretty much any polish on the market with a diminishing abrasive technology is a one step, meaning that they start with a rather rough and aggressive polishing abrasive, which then through the process of polishing and the abrasion and the heat you apply when you polish your paint, the abrasive gets smaller, it gets less aggressive, it gets finer and therefore these products are able to cut and finish in just one step. But that's it when it comes to the one step polishes. These already are rather complicated and now it gets even more complicated because we introduce an additional aspect, meaning that we talk about the all-in-one or three-in-one products. And the all or the three in this aspect refer to the ability that those products not only are supposed to polish your paint, meaning that they are there to remove or to reduce paint defects, but they're also said to fill light paint defects and they're also said to leave something behind on your paint. And even more so than any of the other products, these are inherently compromised because every single one of those aspects, the paint removal part, the filling part, and the protection part will be worse compared to a dedicated product because on paper, they sound too good to be true because they actually aren't meaning. 
every single dedicated polish will be better at removing paint defects. A glaze, which we'll talk about in a minute, is better at filling paint defects and a protective product such as liquid waxes, which we will also talk about soon, is better at protect. And that's why those products are often referred to as cheetah products because they have a place, but they most of the times have a place when you don't have the time or you don't have the budget if you are a professional detailer to do things properly. And by properly, I mean you reduce or remove paint defects with a polish and then you protect your paint. Plus, it gets even more complicated because there is no universal way in which these products are defined. Meaning that some of them are rather good at polishing and removing paint defects, but are not so good at the protection part. Others, on the other hand, are comparably good at filling or protecting, but are not as good at removing paint defects. Which means you have to check reviews and tests in order to find out which of those products suits your demands the best. Within the category of three-in-ones or all-in-ones, there are subcategories. And one very popular, well-known category is the one of pre-works cleaners. The Auto Finesse Rejuvenate is one example, but other well-known examples are the Swiss Wax Cleaner Fluid, the Simul HD Cleans, the Prima Amigo or the very popular Dodo Juice Lime Prime. Now, in order to understand those products, you have to understand the history of them. And I think they were first introduced by wax manufacturers because if a wax manufacturer goes ahead and promises certain things in regards to the gloss that the wax can create, the slickness, the protection, it will happen that there are people out there who apply those waxes to a not so perfectly prepared paint, meaning they did not polish it. So they apply those waxes to paints which have a lot of defects, a lot of swirls, a lot of scratches in them, and therefore these waxes won't create the results that those manufacturers promise. And therefore they thought, well, let's give the consumers something with which they can better prepare their paints, but also something which they can apply by hand and they don't have to use a machine polisher. And that's when the pre-wax cleaners were born because you apply them in the same way that you would apply a wax, meaning by hand you spread them with an applicator and some of them actually do contain very, very fine abrasives which are able to remove some paint defects, but most of them also contain chemical paint cleaners and also a lot of them contain something like waxes, silicones, oils or polymers which leave behind a comparably slick paint surface based on the filling capabilities of those ingredients and therefore the wax that you apply afterwards will be able to create the results that the manufacturer of those waxes promises. So the pre-wax cleaners are really a perfect example of all-in-one products. However, none of them are the same because Prima Amigo pretty much is a glaze because it does not contain any yeah. abrasives. Then we have something like the Swiss Wax Cleaner Fluid, which I think is only a chemical paint cleaner. It does not contain fillers and does not contain abrasives. Then we have Dodo Juice Lime Prime, which does contain abrasives, but also oils, so it acts like a glaze. As I said, very, very complicated category. Then an additional subcategory of the all-in-one products are the so-called primers. Now primers are finishing polishes, which do contain some sort of abrasives, but they also contain fillers, but which are mostly based on resins or ceramic particles. And the main primer comes from their ability to be applied to paint before you apply a ceramic coating. Because if you would use a traditional all-in-one or something like a glaze before you apply a ceramic coating, these products would always be between the paint and the ceramic coating you apply and therefore the ceramic coating would not be able to properly bond to the paint surface. With primers, however, they are said to be perfect to prepare the paint because the ceramic coating can actually bond to them. However, I already did a video in which I showed you that something like Car Pro Essence does work with Car Pro coatings, but can actually hinder the ability of coatings from other brands to properly bond and work on your paint. So I personally have a strict rule when it comes to those primers. And this is if I use a ceramic coating from the same brand as the primer, then it's okay. Otherwise, it's a no-go. So other popular examples of all-in-one products. 
every single product out there that is a polish and wax is a perfect example of a three in one. For example, this ceramic polish and wax by Turtle Wax, but also the three in one from Manzerna is one. The very popular super resin polish by Autoglim is a three in one or all in one. All the polishes by Koch Jimmy, which have the green label up there because they contain some sort of wax or fillers. And also the, yeah, you could say the subcategory of cleaner waxes because cleaner waxes are one which, which contain chemical paint cleaners or they contain some sort of abrasive and therefore also act as a three-in-one or all-in-one product. If we now look at the category of three-in-ones or all-in-ones, but remove the ability to polish or to clean paint and are only left with the ability to fill light paint defects, then we are in the category of glazes. And next to the Auto Finesse Ultra Glaze, which is a good example, we also have something like the Poor Boys Black Hole, very popular, the White Diamond by Poor Boys, the Nuba Glaze by Wax Planet, the Light Matter or Dark Matter by Alchemy, the Light Glaze or Dark Glaze by Infinity Wax. Now, glazes are one trick ponies, which means they are only made for one specific purpose, and this is to fill light paint defects. There will always be a limit to what they can do, meaning that heavy paint defects, deep scratches, they will not be able to fill. But on paint that has only light paint defects in there, they actually can improve the visual appearance of it based on waxes, polymers, oils or silicones which act as fillers. However, once again, car detailing is always about compromises and that means in regards to glazes that the ingredients which are capable to fill those light paint defects will always be ingredients which are not very durable, which means that glazes have their place in the market, but the effect of filling light paint defects will only ever be temporary. And by temporary, I mean days, if not only weeks and two to three washes. And then these oils, these polymers, these waxes will be gone and the paint will be back at its original state and the swirls and the paint defects will reoccur. In this respect, there is a rather new term in the English speaking world, and this is a non-correctional polish. And I personally think that this is utter nonsense. And if you are a professional detailer, you should never use such a term because what it means is you just use something like a glaze or an all-in-one, you just fill light paint defects and you are not honest about what you're doing and you're not honest with your customers. So we now talked about glazes and now we have the last category which are liquid waxes. Now some of those liquid waxes can act like glazes meaning they can fill light paint defects however they will not be as affected at it as a pure glazes. When it comes to liquid waxes, not only is the Auto Finesse Radiance a good example, the Infinity Wax Turbo 6 is one. This actually, I think, also works as a glaze. So that means it is something in between here. The Collinite 845 is another one, which is very popular. Wovos has the Hot Wax. Wax Planet has the Maracana. The Meguiar's Hybrid Ceramic Liquid Wax is also a popular example of those and the rather new Simple Wax Liquid Armor is also one. They have different ingredients. They can be based on synthetic or natural waxes. They can be hybrids in between of those. But those products are only aimed at protection. So you don't have any ability to polish or to correct paint. As I said, there can be slight filling capabilities in there but those products are made to last, those products are made to create hydrophobics, those products are made to protect your paint and not necessarily reduce paint defects. So those are the categories I wanted to talk to you about. However, it is already very complicated, but now I will make it even worse for you because not all manufacturers use those terms in the same way. The Mancerna 3-in-1, for example, there's also written one-step polish on it. So if you are using this and you expect to use a one-step polish that does not leave something behind, you would be wrong because it also says on the bottle, cut, gloss and wax. So 
This would be a three-in-one or all-in-one product, but Mansurna calls it also a one-step polish. And then there's something like the Autobrite Direct Chocolate Glaze, which says glaze in the name of the product. However, if you read the product's description, which is written on the bottle, it says, chocolate glaze is a high quality all-in-one product that cleans paint work whilst also masking minor paint defects and swirls and chocolate glaze also protects your paintwork with its high quality built-in canuba wax. So there we have a product that says glaze on it but really is more like a three-in-one product. And this is the issue with all those products, with all those names, with all those categories. You always have to read carefully what the product descriptions say because you cannot always depend that the manufacturers use those terms and use those categories in the same way. I really, really hope that this video helps you in reducing your confusion with all those products. If it further confused you, then I did a very, very poor job, but at least I tried my best in order to explain to you what those different kinds of products do. If you like this video, leave us a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, I suggest you go and take a walk outside. Subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you next time. Bye.